Hello everybody. Uh, well, it's time to do some rafters now. We've already have the lower side over here on the western wall. We have those, uh, the lower rafters done for the gamber roof. They're on, they're finished. But I didn't take you along when I was laying them out and how I do that. Now, staying with the keeping it simple theme in your carpentry, um, I find the easiest method for me is to make a template. Obviously, most, most of you cut rafters, that's what you do. But uh, I don't use the uh, rafter tables and the calculators and all that because um, I, I just, I try to take the confusion out, out of stuff for myself, especially, you know, I goof up a measurement here and there, as you guys have seen on this project. Usually just an inch or something like that, and it really screws me over, or, you know, six or eight inches on one of them. But uh, the method I use for rafters has served me well for a long time. It kind of, it takes all the guesswork out of it. It takes all the math formulas out of it. All I have to do is make a right triangle out of my boards, do a little measuring, then I can lay what I want for my rafter stock across, scribe it out where I want it. That's my template now. What I do is I'll make the first one, then I'll cut it, then I'll take it up above and I'll test it all down throughout the frame. Now I took my measurements, <clears throat> I'll take them from several spots, especially when I'm doing cookie cutter, because I want to make sure that all of my cut, I'm going to cut them all the same, I want to make sure that they're all going to fit the same. This being a rough cut frame, it's sat in the sun, you guys have seen this thing's been exposed for a long time, things twist, things move, but uh, in all honesty, this side of the building, it's pretty well constant all the way down through. I don't know how that happened, but uh, we got really lucky there. I mean, it's within an eighth of an inch all the way down for my measurements. So I'm going to put you in the time lapse. I'll set up this light, this right hand triangle. Then we'll get the camera in and I'll explain to you guys what I'm doing. This is such a simple way of doing it. I honestly don't know of a simpler way. If you guys have a better way, let me know. Um, throw it in the comments. If you, uh, if you guys are the diehards, break out the, uh, the rafter tables, things like that. I mean, I know some carpenters that can rip stringers and rafters right off the tops of their heads without, and they're just amazing. Uh, my hats are off to those guys. I've never been able to do that, not accurately anyway. And get them really close, but not close enough for what I want. I don't want big gaps in my rafters. So anyway, let's get going. I'll, uh, I'll see you on the other side of it. So what I do to do this, it's really, it's super simple. I mean, at least for me, it doesn't get much simpler than this. But, wow, that wind is whipping tonight, isn't it, guys? So I take my measure, measurement, I make this the corner. This inside corner here is going to be uh, the inside of the right triangle. <clears throat> I get a couple of stretchers across for stability, screw them into the pile again for stability so that when I set my rafter stock on there I'm not tipping this thing off. Well, what I start is I start with one in the middle and then one in this corner <clears throat> and then what I do is I square this up. I'll get it close to square with my framing square and then because this is such a short triangle I do the three four five that gets you your, your right hand angle or six eight ten any there that satisfies your Pythagorean theorem that gets you your right hand triangle so but this way by the time we get all this set up you're not trying to figure out your hypotenuse or anything like that it's, it's really it's really really simple so after I get this set up I get it squared up I do my three four five get my right hand triangle I get a block down on the other side so that everything sits uh, same level, I'm not teetering with that rafter here. I go from my inside corner on this template right here. I measure up to the height of where my top plate would be from the measurements I took up above. Now I'm going to check this more than once because I don't want any uh, goofy stuff going on. So 87 inches. 
Now remember, I'm figuring this off of the, uh, I've got to do this off of the top plates on the eave walls. So those are 40 and a half inches height from the uh, finished floor to the tops of those top plates. So I figure that in when I'm measuring down from the top of my curling plates, which is the highest uh, timber frame members of the structure. And they're all on, by the way, if you didn't catch the last video. So we're going to double check this again. I want 87 inches. Eighty-seven inches. So that eighty-seven inch mark up here, that's going to be the very top of my purlin plate on top, or on top of the building. So I'm going to come over here, I'll adjust the camera for you guys so you can see everything. Stepping over to this side, I have my block right here so I can level up in between here and there. Now something you may also want to do when you're doing this, and I'll probably find another block here, set a block in the middle, especially if you're doing longer rafters, because if they're doing this on you, you're not going to get the most accurate measurements. This won't work very well if you don't have a, if you got a big sag in it. So all we do from this point. I have this mark, I transferred my mark up, this piece right here is nice and flush, so we're going to double check, again we're going to double check from the inside, of that right hand triangle, and I want to look at 83 and 5 eighths, and we have that, beautiful. So now I'm going to take my straightest of rafter stock that I have, I want my, my, the straightest piece that's easy for me to get to on top of this pile of rafter stock. And that's what we want to do our template out. I don't want a big crown and I don't want a big bow. I want this thing to set flat. And, and you'll see as we go to laying them out. So let me uh, throw one up here. I've selected a couple to choose from. And I'll pick the best one and we're going to use it. Of course it's windy here once again. When is it, when is it not windy here? Alright, so this is going to end up being my rafter tail. Up there is going to be the top of the rafter. I want to make sure I have this where I want it. Actually, you know what I need to do? Let's mess this up right off the get-go. <coughs> I want to trim this down. Yeah, that could have been good. Now we have some sawdust. When will it ever end? Hopefully never. Alright, so I want to double check this rafter. Make sure it's not crowned. Because crowns are no good. Well, crowns are fine, you just have to get the crowns up. But for this template piece, I want it pretty darn close to perfect. So all I do now is I just line up to my marks here. This is pretty much the equivalent of taking your rafter up, holding it in place and tracing it out. This is just a lot safer because to do that up above, 
you'd have to kind of hang out over space to get on the very last one. Well, how'd I get that right on? Okay, cool. Make sure we're still good. It is windier than hell. Right on the money. So all we do, simple, simple, just trace it out down here and that's all we have to worry about. Make sure you get a good dark line and a good easy line to follow because it just makes it a lot just makes it a lot easier. So we'll just double check ourselves. And on the money. Be careful not to move this. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to screw this thing down while you're tracing it. But I'm not too worried about it right now. guy over. I feel like I'm doing a cooking show or something. There we go. There's my marks. Now I'm just going to straighten them out with a straight edge. Hang a foot. There we go. Let's cut it off, cut this damn thing up, and uh, see what you guys think when we're done. Alright, the wind's kicking up pretty well here, so I'll talk as quick as I can, explain what we did, what we have going on, and where we're going. So this is our first rafter for the eastern wall, the lower section of the Gambra roof. Um, it goes really easy, it may seem like a lot of screwing around to you guys who have done this for a long time and are really good at it. Unfortunately, I don't do enough rafters often enough to where I where I'm really proficient at using the tables on the square, thing like that. So what I do, like I said, I make my right triangle, I take my measurements from up there, and really it makes it pretty foolproof for me to get them right and accurate the first time, every time. So what we're going to do with this, I'm not going to bother taking the camera up because it's really windy, it's kind of crappy, and it's dark out right now. So I'm going to take this up and I'm going to test fit this every few feet along the building and make sure that make sure it's going to fit right. Um, if it doesn't fit right, I make adjustments and keep going, but believe it or not, as long as I take the time to 
square that corner up. I've never had this not work for me the first time. Uh, the first time I tried doing it this way, I didn't take the time to square enough, but I figured it out after the second one. And uh, so it works really well. Um, you know, I'm open to suggestions. If you guys have a better way, yeah, please let me know. I'm, I'm very curious to know how you guys do your own. Now, one way I've done in the past, and it's not really safe, and to be honest with you, I don't feel like taking any more tumbles on this project. Uh, I don't need a limp in both legs. I'm good with the one I have. A lot of times, what I used to do years ago when I'd have to do rafters, I'd get my plates up, I'd get my ridge board up, and then I would hang over the outside the gable wall and trace it out. Um, that's pretty stupid of me to do because, well, I'm surprised I never... To be honest with you, I'm 36 years old, almost 37. I'm surprised this is the first time in my life I've been seriously injured with the stupid stuff I've done. Uh, I've lived a charm life up until this point, and I think maybe somebody was trying to give me a reminder that that could change at any moment. But uh, it did come up in one of the comments on a video we did showing rafters recently about how deep this was and why it, they didn't like how deep it was. So when you're doing common rafters, if you're not cutting rafter seats in the uh, plates, which I am not, I'm relying on mechanical fasteners to hold that in place. I'm using uh, six inch long timber locks and they're pretty rugged, pretty sturdy. Um, so this is a bird's foot. This will hook over the outside of the top plate, kind of like a bird perched on a branch. Um, Jim Rogers explains this very well. You guys uh, check out Jim Rogers' channel if you haven't already. He puts some good information out. He, he knows quite a bit about this stuff. But uh, So anyway, this is a bird's foot. It goes to the outside of the plate. If I had my notch going to the inside of the plate, that would be the bird's mouth. Now, the bird's mouth, most people that I know of only cut it about it. They don't go over a third deep. But being as how I'm on using a bird's foot, this is how I do it. And I could be wrong. It's never failed me, but I probably shouldn't say that because now the uh, rafter tails probably all break off in a good snow. But believe me, this is a 12-12 pitch sheet metal roof. The wind around here, I don't think I'm going to have any issues with snow sticking. I've got a 512 pitch on the house with asphalt shingles. No snow has ever stayed on that roof in the wintertime. But uh, I wanted as much surface area in contact with that top plate as possible where this is going to sit. Um, this is going to, it's only overhanging about a foot, so it's getting a 2 by 3 in all actuality. It's like a 2 by 3 for support. I'm not really worried about this, these coming off of there or this breaking right here. Now, obviously, you have to pay attention to knot placement. Again, we talked about that in another video, but knot placement, I don't want to knot right over this because there's that would just take anything structural out of it. But uh, anyway, that's what we have. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, look for this weekend. Hopefully, we'll get this set of rafters up and uh, we'll get them all cut. Cut them all at once, get them all up at once. I have uh, Saturday, I'm going to pick up the rest of my rafters, the two by eights for the very top of the Gambro roof. Uh, I went with two by sixes right here because it, it is such a steep roof pitch. There's not a lot of load on it. Uh, you will have some wind load, but to be honest with you, it's really steep this first, this first section. So the steeper the roof, the less load there is on it, at least for, uh, for weight but that does not negate wind load or anything so keep that in mind and we do have wind here but anyway i will see you guys on the next one it's getting late and i need to carry my ass into bed so have a good night everybody